I'm Karen Quinn, the Curator of Art and Culture here at the New York State Museum, and I'd like to give you a few tips on how to take care of two-dimensional works of art in your home, that stuff that's flat. Um, first of all, we're going to look at oil on canvas. And when we talk about two-dimensional works, we talk about what they're pa painted or drawn with, and then what they're painted or drawn on. And the with part is what we call the medium. The on part is called a support. So this is, the medium here is oil. It's a small painting of apples by Levi Wells Prentice. And then the support is canvas. And an oil on canvas painting is pretty stable. That is, environmentally speaking. Um, in order to take care of an oil on canvas, really the best, the only things you need to worry about are uh, don't put it over a radiator, don't put it over a fireplace if it's a working fireplace. Because it's canvas, um, it is less prone to swings in humidity, and it's humidity that's really the worst thing for um, two-dimensional works of art. If your painting is on a panel or a, a cardboard board or artist board, um, that those kinds of things are a little bit more um, prone to swings in humidity, so they might need a more stable environment. But in general, uh, a painting is pretty stable. I would recommend that you don't touch it. In terms of conservation, you need to find, if you need some, if you think it's, it's dirty or something, don't take that on yourselves, please. Uh, find a, a trained professional conservator and there certainly are lots of them, um, lots of them available, both in in practices where a group of them work together, and in private practice singly. This is a watercolor on paper by Jasper Cropsey, one of the Hudson River School painters. And watercolors require a slightly different treatment than oil or acrylic on canvas. Uh, watercolors are very, very light sensitive, so you don't want to put them in direct sunlight. Actually, you don't want to put anything in direct sunlight, but especially not a watercolor or, or any work on paper. Um, because the pigments are what we call fugitive, they can fade. Another thing you'll notice is that this is matted and framed, and the mat keeps the, um, keeps the work from hitting the front of the frame and possibly getting stuck, so that's important. And then also, um, it is glazed, and when we talk about something that's glazed, it means there is glass or plexiglass over the top of it. And these days, there's so many great developments um, in terms of the care of works of art. Uh, we would recommend that you cover something, if you're going to glaze it, with an ultraviolet plexiglass that will filter through the ultraviolet rays that are the things that will mostly fade your, um, your work of art. Um, so you don't want to put it in any kind of direct sunlight, and in fact, when we display things in the museum, we try to keep works on paper only on view for three to six months at a time, and then they have to go for a rest, as we call it, but that's not always possible, so we do, we pay very close attention to the lighting levels and to the, um, the glazing, the, the ultraviolet protection. And lastly, I just wanted to pull out a drawing. This is an E.L. Henry drawing from our collection. And drawings are works on paper like watercolors, so they would require the same kind of treatment. Another um, medium that would require the same kind of treatment would be a print, a lithograph, a wood engraving, um, an engraving, and so forth, woodcut. Um, in terms of treating them to light levels and glazing and so forth. Another thing I didn't mention was the kind of mat you would put on a uh, work on paper. And uh, you would want to get a mat that is what is called acid-free so that it doesn't um, damage the work of art. And like so many things, conservation, restoration, matting and framing is expensive, but it's also well worth it if you like your work of art and you want it to last a long time. <music>